For Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepard, and my guest for the next several minutes is the author of The Barefoot Executive, Carrie Wilkerson. Her book is in print from Thomas Nelson and now available as an audio book by Oasis Audio. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Wayne, for having me. I understand you just finished reading the book for the audio book edition. So what was that like? <laughs> Um, do I be honest, or do I say what everybody wants me to say? Which I is... know you did well, so don't don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. Well, you know what? The audio quality was good. I'm happy to do that for my readers and my audience, but I have to say I, I'm just better live or in this kind of format than reading. <laughs> so you like to be extemporaneous, huh? Extemporaneous is the word for the day, absolutely. I'm a little more off the cuff. I like to be responsive to my audience so that we can go different routes if we need to. Um, My dad is a pastor and has been for over 20 years, and I think I learned that from him. I mean, I would know he had an outline going in, but he really was pretty good at being responsive to what he knew was going on in the audience or where he felt that was going. So I guess that's why I prefer a live or interactive format like this. I love the title of this book, The Barefoot Executive. Boy, does that say it or what? (laughs) You know, as we're doing this interview, I have to be honest, I'm sitting in my office at the house, which happens to be a corner office, and I'm looking out the window at the beautiful day, and I do have my bare feet propped up on the desk. (laughs) You know, I didn't create the brand to be catchy. Uh, My husband nicknamed me the Barefoot Executive when I was pregnant with our third child and running a high six-figure business from home. He nicknamed me that, and it stuck. So I really do live this. I thought you were going to tell me you had your cowboy boots on today. No, no, not so much. You know, those are pretty dang hot. I don't, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty hot out here, and I don't wear those unless we're going somewhere that warrants it. But my kids and I, we, we prefer uh, no footwear if we, can, okay. if we can get away with it. I should explain, you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, right? I am in Texas, yes, Okay, sir. all right. Mm-hmm. I thought you were a Texas person. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, tell me why you wanted to write this. Well, well first of all, tell me about what you do and, and who you're trying to reach with your, with your help. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, I didn't have any business aspirations growing up. I, I did what, what we're taught to do. I went to school. I went to college. I became a teacher. I worked part-time and full-time in several corporate ways while I was going through school and even while I was teaching as a supplemental income. And uh, something happened that just changed my life direction, and that was uh, I adopted two siblings And so overnight, I became a mom, and overnight, I decided that my career was not what defined me, and uh, I chose to stay at home. However, not having a financial plan, I still needed the income. My husband and I were young, and uh, we still needed that second income. So I decided I had to be making some money at home, and I set out to find out how I could do that. So that was in 1998. And I've been there and done that with almost every work-at-home opportunity or lifestyle there was. And um, the truth is I've been successful in all of them. I've been successful at everything I've done or at least everything I've publicized (laughs) and um, (laughs) learned from all of it, the good stuff and the bad. So finally, um, you know, as I mentioned, when I was pregnant with our third child, my husband nicknamed me the Barefoot Executive and said, Carrie, you need to tell other people. You need to write a book and tell people they can absolutely have it all. They don't have to compromise. So I wrote that in my journal. Someday I'm going to write a book called (laughs) The Barefoot Executive. And um, after child number four, I actually started a website instead called The Barefoot Executive. And uh, now I have Barefoot Executive TV and podcasts and all those things. But it really was for the work-at-home community. First, Wayne, so that they didn't feel so isolated. Right. So that they knew there were other people doing what they did or at least having the same aspirations. Because, honestly, it can feel, as a freelancer or telecommuter or you know self-employed, you can feel very alone. Because the people at church, sir, don't understand you. The people at the grocery store don't understand why you're not wearing you know work clothes or why you're at every school function. Um, so I started it as a community, really. And then started giving advice and started answering questions. And, and now, you know, I work with people on strategies to grow their business, grow their income, and still keep their priorities intact. And that website has expanded. Now you have Facebook, which I've enjoyed reading those posts here the last couple of days, <laughs> and Twitter. So it all works together for you to uh, build that community you talked about. Well, exactly. You need to go where the people are. You may be at home, but your clients are not at your home, and they're not going to walk up to your front door. So you have to be where they are. So that means since the majority of the population right now is on social networking, you need to be Facebook, Google+, 
YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. You need to show up in at least some of those places where your prospects are. Well, as I told you off air, you are speaking my language because I'm one of those people who's self-employed and have been for about five years now and love it. Yeah. The, the challenges are not easy sometimes, but the rewards are great, aren't they? They're absolutely priceless. They really are. Um, you know, I have several days a week typically that I wake up and think, you know what, it would just be so much easier to go clock in and clock out <laughs> yeah. and do what the average Joe is doing. And then something will happen. I'll, I'll witness a landmark with one of my kids or I'll have an experience with my husband or I'll get a note from a client and I think this is why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. It's what Mary Kay Ash, cosmetics mogul, used to call paychecks of the heart. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't really quantify those. Mm-hmm. And as of the time of this conversation, unemployment is more than 9% now across the country and underemployment is more like 17%. Mm-hmm. So more than ever, we need you right now. Well, and you know what I heard somebody say the other day is we have a nation of the involuntarily (laughs) self-employable. They didn't necessarily choose that position, but they've been pink slipped or they've been downsized or they've been pay cut or or their spouse has left and they were the primary income. Whatever your situation is, um, it's a time right now to be looking at additional income. And you know what, Wayne? The bottom line is, even if you love your job, your career, even if you're totally happy and fulfilled, you still aren't wise to be dependent Mm -hmm. on one stream of income. That's right. I am so passionate about that, really. I know you talk more about this in the book, but how do I... Uh, how does anyone learn to uh, go after their own dream, their, their own dream that God has placed in their heart, and not someone else's dream or someone else's expectation of them? Um, you know, that's a hard thing. That's a hard thing, especially when, you know, I was raised in the South for the most part. My dad was Coast Guard, but we settled here in Texas. Um, I was raised in a very evangelical, uh, conservative family, lots of really strong core family values, the very traditional roles of male and female in the household, you know, those kind of things. So giving yourself permission to break out of those molds can be really difficult. Um, I was blessed in that my dad had me convinced I could do anything and everything I wanted to as long as I went to a Baptist college first so I'd have a degree to back up my plan, and that's probably where I'm going to meet my spouse. Okay, do you see the conflicting messages uh-huh. there? Yep. Yep. Now, now he totally believes in me. I, my life baffles him a little because my husband works for me. But, um, you know, that's how I was raised. My mom was raised very much. Um, you only go to college just so you have that in case your spouse dies. You know, I mean, it's very, um, it, it's a hard thing for a lot of people to follow your passion instead of the path that's been set apart for you. Um, you know, I thought our families were going to have a heart attack the day my husband retired at 35 from his financial planner position with a corporation. He was a VP, and um, he retired to work at home for me. Hmm. So you can imagine it's really strong. But here's the deal. You guys can't wait for permission from somebody else. If you're waiting for permission, consider it granted. I give you permission now Mm -hmm. to follow something. But don't be rash about it. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Don't abandon your job. Do have a plan. Do transition. And that's some of what I talk about in my book is, you know, how to start part-time and build it up instead of, going whole hog and putting your sure. family in financial jeopardy. You yeah. don't ever want to do that. A lot to think through there very carefully. Yeah. And and sometimes it's not taking the path of least resistance. You know, it's not just chasing after where the money is or the easy money we think it's there. We we really have to think carefully what what our long term goal is. Yeah, nothing nothing irritates me more. And unfortunately with the ease of online information right now, it's a blessing and a curse. With the ease of online information, we can see and we say, oh, Carrie's on Facebook and Twitter, and this is what she's doing, and this is what she's selling. I could do that. Or clearly, this is the market that everybody's doing well, so I could do that. Well, Gary Vee is making multiple millions in the wine market. Maybe that's what I should do. Stop that line of thinking right now. It all starts internally with what are you good at? What have you been paid to do? You know, maybe you have a gift with children or a gift with cooking or a gift with computers. Whatever it is, what do you have a gift for? What do you have skills for? And what can you do most immediately for profit? Quit worrying about what everyone else is doing. You know, Wayne, I love the movie The Secretariat. And Secretariat's a racehorse. And what I love is that the owner tells his daughter, you let the horse 
run their own race. And Penny, you run your own race too. You can't run somebody else's race. You can't live somebody else's dream. It really does have to be yours. Do you talk about mentoring in your book? A lot. I talk about it a lot. You know, my dad modeled that for me, not only through the Coast Guard. You know, if you look at our military structure, how's it, how's it created, Wayne? It's created with built-in mentors, sure. right? You have to go up through the ranks, yep. so to speak. Most traditional employment is the same way. But then we get out and be self-employed, and we get to be rebellious, and we think, well, I'm going to do it my way on my time and my terms. And that works to a certain extent, except you're, you're trying to reinvent the wheel. You're making mistakes you don't have to make because somebody else has already made them. So often, hiring a mentor, reading a mentor, studying a mentor one at a time is typically a really great shortcut and lifesaver for what you want to do. I, I really was fortunate to see this modeled through my dad. You know, he was very convinced that, you know, if he could find a book, a magazine, or a membership on something, he could literally, you know, conquer the world. And he has, and I talk about that a lot in my book, too. So find a mentor, whether you read them, listen to them, learn from them, or, you know, work with them personally. A mentor is just really important. It'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of heartache. Let me ask you honestly, why are you giving this advice away when you could be selling it? Well, you know, the book is for sale, but the fact is I give a lot of advice away on my blog and uh, blog Barefoot and BarefootExecutive.tv because I live to serve. Now, I do have to pay my mortgage, too, like everybody does, but we are in an age where relationships are more relevant than ever. True? Yep. Absolutely true. And online, people tend to think, well, I want to be automated. I want to be behind the website. Well, here's the deal. Just like we used to say, you know, innocent until proven guilty. That may be true in the courts, but that's not true in business anymore. In business, it's I don't trust you until you prove I can trust you. Why should I trust you? So by giving away free advice, by giving away free information, by doing blog posts, and, and really coaching people online in a lot of ways, I am proving that I can be trusted. I'm knocking down the wall of mistrust one brick at a time hmm. so that when people get ready to hire or buy, they already trust me. I have a shorter sales cycle. I don't have to prove to you that I'm innocent until proven guilty. I've already shown you that I have good information, that I know what I'm talking about, that I'm open and honest and trustworthy. Well, again, I think your book is the perfect one for these times, because as you think back over the last few decades, I mean, in my father's life, it was his dream and reality to spend his whole life working for one company. And I started out my career thinking I'd work for one company forever. And I I was there for a long time. But things change and and loyalties change. And uh, that's not the kind of world we live in today, is it? No, it's really not. And I talk about in the chapter about fairy tales, you know, the Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, and job security. Um, it, <laughs> they just don't exist. They're fun ideas. They're nice to think about, but the fact is they don't exist. And at the end of the day, the only person, the only person with job security is the owner of the company. In my company, the only person with job security is me. And to a somewhat less degree, Mr. Barefoot also. (laughs) But, you know, in my book, I talk a lot about the fact that this is how we're trained. We're trained to think of the job security. However, you know, I think I always knew I was a little different. My very first job out of college, I said to my husband, I love this. I'm having a great time. But I was looking at all these other people that had been there 20 and 30 years, and I said, I don't see it. I just really don't see it. And part of me really, even just talking about it, got really apprehensive and a little stressed out about thinking, really, really, 20 years, 30 (laughs) years, I don't know if I can do that. So we have since looked at history and seen that I have about a two- or three-year attention span when you make me do the same thing every day for somebody else, two to three years, like clockwork. So while that frustrated my parents and my teachers and people around me, Terry, if you would just stick to one thing, we've all heard that, right? Yep. If you would just stick to one thing, et cetera, et cetera. I turned that around. Instead of feeling like it was a weakness, now I've embraced it as a strength. As my own business owner, as my own employer, I can now leverage that, and I can evolve and grow my business every two or three years if I choose. That is really very helpful. The other thing you've done, Carrie, is that you've, you've helped us juggling family and self-employment or entrepreneurialship. You know what I mean? You, you, you've raised a family. Mm-hmm. I have four kids, absolutely. They range in age from four to 
almost 16. Oh, boy, let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, you know what? I, there's a reason that they're not born teenagers. Amen? <laughs> I mean, seriously, you have those first few years so that you have too much invested in them to just lock them in a closet. Um, <laughs> love my kids. I have one boy and three girls, and we live in the middle of nowhere, literally, and very close to my parents, very involved in my church, my community, and, and we juggle it all. My son has extensive special needs because of some choices his birth mother made. He deals with fetal alcohol syndrome. So mm. really, you know, that counts as multiple kids right there, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Um, there is no secret to juggling it all. What I would encourage people to do is say quit striving for balance. It's a myth. <laughs> balance is a myth. It, it's give and take. It's ebb and flow. There are busier seasons than other. Just like the horse race we talked about earlier, there are times when Secretariat lags at the back on purpose. That's how that horse starts every race at the back of the race, and then they know when to pour on the speed. Um, there are times when I can run in my business. There are times I trot, and there are times that really I just need to walk the track a little bit, depending on what's going on with my family. However, there's a huge mindset in my kids are my reason why I must succeed instead of my kids are my excuse why I'm not working more diligently. Mm. Use your kids as a reason, not an excuse. Use your parents you're taking care of as a reason, not an excuse. Use your finances, et cetera, et cetera. Use your obstacles as reasons, not excuses. It makes a huge difference difference. But I will say I work a lot when they're asleep. I work when they're gone. I, I've trained them. I mean, they can be trained. Your parents cannot be trained, but your kids can be trained. And they know when to play quietly. They know when they can come in and out. And also, my clients have been trained. They know I might be on a call like this, and Baby Barefoot might pop in to ask me a question. You know, it's just a matter of being flexible and keeping my priorities intact. Because if you sacrifice your priorities, then really you've just created another job for yourself. Sure. Yeah, working out of the house has its own set of challenges, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. There's always the, but first I got us. You know, I'm going to get up and go get my coffee. Oh, but first I've got to load the dishwasher. Oh, but first I've got to, while yeah. I'm here, now I'm going to start a load of laundry. Oh, but first I've got to pack the kids' lunches, and then i got to, and then you've wasted the whole day without getting anything done. So you really do have to kind of compartmentalize your day. I have a no housework during work hours rule. Mm -hmm. I pretend that I don't see it. Now, that's hard. I've got four kids, a big dog, a husband, and they're all very messy, very messy, all of them, <laughs> the dog, the husband, and the kids. I don't have one neat nick among any of them. And so I do have to kind of put the filters on. During work hours, I can't also be the maid. I just can't do it. Um, so the other thing is you have to train your extended family. Just because I'm at home during the day doesn't mean you can just pop in and out and hang out. doesn't mean I can keep your kids. It doesn't mean I can go run errands for you. You have to have boundaries, and boundaries are, I believe, one of the number one reasons why self-employed people fail. Mm -hmm. They don't train themselves, they don't train the people around them, and they don't set boundaries. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not as easy as people may think it is. You really yeah. have to be disciplined about it, don't you? Yeah, and we hate that word, don't we? <laughs> we want to be rebels. We don't want to be disciplined. But if you don't discipline yourself, somebody else will always be happy to do it for you. Mm -hmm. So you really have to set some, set some hours. Um, it doesn't have to be 9 to 5. It could be whatever you decide it can be, but you do have to have some focus time. Now, that being said, Wayne, as soon as we hang up this phone, I'm going to log off, and I'm going to go hang out at the pool Good. with my daughter and her friend that came over. It's the middle of a work day. I have the freedom to do that, but I will put in that time somewhere else. I will put in that effort somewhere else. I've been up since 4.30 today. Mm -hmm. So I've put in the time. Yep. It's just a matter of being able to be flexible and create it the way I need it to be. All right. Well, before I let you get to the pool, uh, I want to ask you in conclusion, for the person who's picked this book up and they're seeking the courage to step out in faith and do something that they, they really feel like they ought to be doing, what's your encouragement? What's your challenge to them today? Don't use faith as an excuse. You know, we, we have to have not just faith but guts. You have to... It's something I say over and over, multiple times in the book, multiple times when I'm interviewed, is we're all scared. We all have fear. We're all uncertain. I seem confident, but that's because I'm pushing through it. I made a decision. I could be scared and broke, or I could function afraid and be well paid. And I chose to function through the fear and be paid for it. 
we're all acting outside of our comfort zone. Those of us that you think are successful, those of us that are doing this, you know, Wayne, you wake up on days and you don't know where the next client is. Mm -hmm. You have days where you think, okay, are they going to be a repeat or is, you know, where's this next contract going to come from? We have fear. There's no certainty. And that's okay. Keep doing what you know you need to be doing. Listen to a mentor that you trust. Read the right stuff. Put in the time. Be disciplined. And you will have results. You have to give yourself permission to achieve. You have to give yourself permission to buck the status quo. But you absolutely can make this work. Well, there's lots more help in this book, The Barefoot Executive. Give us the website one more time, Carrie. BarefootExecutiveBook.com is where you can actually see a video series. Um, There's a question for every chapter in the book, BarefootExecutiveBook.com. You can also find me at BlogBarefoot.com. And you're on Facebook and Twitter as well. I'm everywhere. Lots of resources. (laughs) Carrie Wilkerson, The Barefoot Executive, now available from Oasis Audio. Carrie. It's time to go enjoy the kids for a few minutes before you get back to work, okay? Absolutely. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks for your time. For Oasis Audio, I'm Wayne Shepherd.